Have you heard about the recent 1 in 500 year event that's taken the Yellowstone National Park by storm? Yes, you've heard it right. The flooding along the Yellowstone River is no ordinary calamity. It's a rarity, a once in half a millennium occurrence brought on by an unprecedented deluge and rapid snowmelt. Just imagine, over 10,000 visitors were evacuated from the park the park's entrances were all shut, securing the safety of both wildlife and humans. The U.S. Geological Survey's data paints a stark picture. The peak stream flow at two locations along the Yellowstone River exceeded the one in 500-year flood level. A reality that's hard to comprehend, isn't it? But it's not just about the flooding. This extreme weather event is a part of a larger narrative, the narrative of climate change Climate change is no longer a distant threat, it's here, impacting the frequency of such extreme weather events. In a span of just three days, Yellowstone National Park received two to three times the typical rainfall for the entire month of June. It's an alarming fact that underscores the urgency of our fight against climate change. This event is a stark reminder of the unpredictability of nature and the increasing impact of climate change. It's a wake-up call, urging us to rethink our actions and their consequences on our planet. Now, what does this mean for Yellowstone National Park and tourism in Montana? In the wake of the flood, the park has begun its recovery process. The south loop of the park is set to reopen, albeit with some areas limited to day use only. This means visitors can once again marvel at the wonders of Yellowstone albeit with some restrictions. However, the North Loop, unfortunately, will remain closed for the rest of the season. This is a significant blow, but necessary to ensure the safety of visitors and the protection of the park's unique ecosystem. But let's not forget about Montana, the state that houses the majority of this magnificent park. The state's governor, Greg Gianforte, has been vocal in his encouragement for tourism. He emphasizes that despite the hit from the floods, Montana is open for business. Its vast landscapes, rich history, and warm hospitality remain unchanged. The flood was indeed a devastating event, but it has not dampened the spirit of Yellowstone or Montana. Both remain vibrant and welcoming, testament to their resilience. Despite the devastation, Montana remains resilient and open for visitors. Switching gears now, have you considered what the U.S. Air Force's plan for modernization might mean for national security? Secretary of the Air Force, Frank Kendall, has been quite vocal about the need to retire older aircraft that are not suitable for a conflict with China. The focus is on preparing for what's termed as great power competition, meaning the Air Force is looking to ensure its readiness to respond to modern threats. Kendall and his team have proposed retiring over 200 aircraft, including the A-10 Thunderbolt II attack aircraft, F-15C-D Eagles, and F-16C-D Fighting Falcons, KC-135 Stratotankers, and KC-10 Extenders, C-130 Hercules Transport Planes, E-8C Joint Surveillance Target Attack Radar System Aircraft, and RQ-4 Globehawk Drones. The goal is to streamline the fighter fleet from seven types to just four, prioritizing the F-16, F-35, F-15EX, and the Next Generation Air Dominance, or NGAD, fighter. This strategic shift is not just about reducing numbers, but also about focusing resources on advanced technologies that can effectively deter potential adversaries. But it's not all smooth sailing. Congress has been reluctant to retire outdated airframes, limiting the Air Force's access to advanced technologies and potentially hindering modernization efforts. The Air Force argues that retiring outdated aircraft would free up funds for new capabilities and avoid the need for costly repairs and maintenance. However, lawmakers have consistently opposed these retirements, a move the Air Force believes jeopardizes national security interests. Though met with resistance, the Air Force's push for modernization highlights the changing landscape of defense strategy. What do these events tell us and why should we care? The Yellowstone River flooding, a once in 500 years event, speaks volumes about the escalating impacts of climate change. 
It has shaken up our environment and tourism, forcing us to rethink our preparedness and resilience. Meanwhile, the U.S. Air Force's push for modernization underlines a shift in defense strategy, emphasizing the need for advanced technologies to counter modern threats. Both events underscore the imperatives of adaptation and modernization in the face of environmental changes and geopolitical shifts. As we move forward, it is clear that adaptation and modernization will be key in navigating the challenges of our changing world.